me for this honor. And uh, particularly, I am touched to see so many people who have come here. And in particular, my lifelong friend, Mr. M. S. Jairaman, gave me a cheer. He, he has been my friend for the last 40 years, and so I was greatly touched by his presence here today. And also Telekavati, and I think I am very happy to be with this thing. When I heard of all these people praising me in my presence, I remembered what Jayaprakash Narayan long ago said in Delhi at a meeting, I feel scandalized in the reverse direction. <laughs> so I feel scandalized in the reverse direction as of now. And at, I want to say another thing. I lost my wife 30 years ago. And for the last 30 years, I've been able to continue writing even now. Because the mind is still active, but the body is decaying. Anyway, so for the last 30 years, they have my daughter Padma and my son is Ramanathan. They have been taking care of me. And so, which uh, helps me continue right. So I dedicate this honor to them. And now I request my uh, Mr. Ramanathan to read this, my acceptance. I thank the Sahitya Academy for the honor for choosing me the Fellow of National Academy of Letters. I always consider myself as an Indian writer, writing in Tamil. I write in Tamil because this is the only language with, this, with which I am historically and culturally connected and a language which I think I can use reasonably well to express my thoughts and feelings. Though I have been writing from my school and college days, only during the daily phase of my professional career, I got published. I feel this has determined the nature of my writings. Most of my writings centered around only two places. One is Delhi and the other Kumbhagonam, which is my native region. Being away from Tamil Nadu and being an alien citizen sort of in Delhi, I had the advantage of being an observer to look at things that were happening at both places objectively. A Bengali poet once asked me how it was possible for me to be a Tamil writer from Delhi. His argument was that a plant can grow only in its own soil. Maybe I am not a coconut tree forcibly planted in Delhi. Maybe I am not an exclusive plant but just one of those common varieties that can grow anywhere, even in a desert. My stories may lack the distinctive soil flavor of a specific region in Tamil Nadu, as someone wrote some time back. But I feel I am in good company. A poet of the Sangam era said, quote, I belong to all regions in the world and all are my kin, unquote. I have taught Tamil literature for 36 years and to be a teacher and also to be a modern creative writer as well in that language seemed to be an apparent contradiction in terms of those days when I started getting published. This is one of the reasons for my pseudonym about which I feel happy now because it looks as though I was a visionary choice. Tamil is an ancient language and its antiquity can be traced to the early centuries before the common era. Moreover, it has the longest literary continuity among the spoken languages of this country. This tradition is at once its asset and liability, asset in the sense that one can be justifiably proud of one's heritage, liability because a romantic obsession with the past and sentimentalized history push the clock by several centuries. The Tamil academics in those days lived in the past, most of the values of which were not relevant in the context of contemporary reality. As a creative writer living in the present, I believe that literature is a living artistic expression of stability and change, continuity and innovation, history and progress. True. There cannot be an instant evolution of any language. It has to be an origin, growth and a long tradition before it reaches the stage of serious adulthood. But this does not mean that the greatness of a language 
solely depends upon its exclusive part its maturity is determined only in the context of its contemporary vitality and relevance till the early 60s a traditional tamil scholar in the classical mold refused to believe that there was anything good about tamil contemporary writing and at the same time it was unfortunate that the modern creative writers of the era although they quote a chapter and verse from iliad isra pound james joyce and kafka they were blissfully unaware of their own tamil classical tradition happily things are changing now and many of the young contemporary authors given to serious writing have realized that there cannot be a present without a past now coming to the business of writing why do i write in a way i seek my own identity and it is also my responsibility to myself and the society i do not want to use the word commitment because i feel this word has been much abused commitment is identified with ideology and ideology once it is institutionalized becomes stagnant the political intellectuals stick with ideology more as a matter of habit than conviction but a creative writer does not feel ashamed to accept change when it feels that his god has failed this is the reason why i would rather prefer to use the word responsibility instead of commitment creative writing is a social act i know i have to be exceptionally aware of people around me this will naturally involve a kind of responsibility personal social and moral it is necessary that i have a compassion involvement and clarity as i already said i write fiction in tamil salman rushdi once said that modern indian literature began to be taken seriously only after the arrival of indo anglican writing i am happy that i do not write creative fiction in english that might have given me a kind of neurosis that i need explaining myself to a western reader or introduce exotic events that may have an instant appeal to a western mind as an indian writer writing is in my mother tongue i feel my genetic makeup my environment my past my experience my psychology my responses all these things are unique to myself as my fingerprints are i am convinced that if my creative writing comes from my own authentic quote unquote i it will have integrity that really matters i feel the necessity for communicating my inner reactions and responses arising out of my experience with outer reality to others as a kind of sharing because of the existence of a common perpetual world with agreed symbols it is a never ending dialogue between i and you i write to communicate like the kite that needs the resistance of air to fly i need a reader i do not believe in the technological approach to writing it is like the story of a girl who was once told to be sure of a meaning before she spoke she retorted quote how can i know what i think until i see what i say unquote this is true of creative art too actual writing alone can answer this question what is this novel or play that i propose to write tolstoy once declared this indeed is one of the significant facts about a true work of art that its content in its entirety can be expressed by itself writing a novel or a short story or a play is much more like having a baby that constructing than constructing a bridge an engineer who is in charge of constructing the bridge has to equip himself with all the technological data before he starts his work a young woman need not be an expert on genetics or embryology if she decides to have a baby creative work is a spontaneous response to a situation and as such when one starts writing about his or her experience it is not essential for him or her with all the theories of literary criticism or to have an academic degree creative imagination functions in the darkness of the mind writing is a kind of exploration an intense inner odyssey in search of the writer's own personality an affirmation of his attitudes towards life and society it is an adventure into a dark an unpredictable jungle it is an onward movement through time it exists in the time dimension as music does and not in the space dimension as painting and sculpture do 
once the writer is seized with the problem he proposes to deal with in his creative work he should be least concerned about the plot incidents and all such trivia and at the same time he should be sure that he has something to say worthy of sharing my starting point for all my stories are the characters and i strongly believe that if i put them successfully on the stage their interactions with each other will dictate the plot and the story will write itself a good novel is not determined by the technical perfection of the plot ulysses is a good novel and if its plot is boiled down to its synopsis one will find it a lifeless stuff a transparent nothing yet the way the novel is written holds the attention of a serious reader why because of an inevitability in its structure it could not have been written by anyone else except james joyce the same theme may be handled by two different writers but the end product would have its own inevitability and character like the same story of dr faustus as immortalized by christopher marlow and gothe in two different ways or valmiki's ramayana as rendered by almost all the regional poets in india each version justifying the culture and genius of the different idioms the important thing is style the truth emerging in a language language is the most flexible instrument man has evolved in a struggle with nature hegel describes the word as the most pliable material that directly belongs to the human spirit truth is a statement of language as truth is the product of association style is an affirmation of a writer's personality his idea his experience in the world of common people and events his way of looking at life and his integrated character quote where there is clarity of vision there is clarity of style unquote said mahakavi ba- subramanya bharati for the first time in the history of tamil literature since the sangamira the existence of the common man was recognized by adopting a spoken language in the works of poetry and fiction bharati as a poet led this movement by rescuing poetry from pedantry and pudumai pitan the foremost among modern tamil sh- short story writers used the near poetic dialect of the common man to project his plight under an oppressive economic and social order he also declared that his stories are not insurance policies guaranteeing prosperity for the future both of them can be justifiably held at the as the pithamagars of modern tamil writing i feel happy that as of now the educated classes among the oppressed have risen in revolt to demolish everything that has been held sacred a true portrayal of the period in which we live many of the brilliant writers writing in tamil today belong to the marginalized sections of the society they are totally apolitical and amoral because ideology stripped of the sacredness is a dirty word in their dictionary and befittingly so i dedicate this honor today to my daughter padma and my son in law who has been diligently taking care of me for the past 30 years which helped me continue writing in spite of my personal tragedy thank you all thank you sahit academy is instrumental to repay that that receiving by honoring such a great author very versatile one one thing whenever we organize such a event for fellowship we not only honor that great author we feel honored and sahit academy feel glorified by doing so that is a great moment for all of us now parshati ji his acceptance speech i think tomorrow we are having a yuva puraskar event we shall circulate that acceptance speech and it will pave a great way to them it is a guiding force to them author should know how to write what to write the great authors whenever i read parshati ji two things came into my mind he is the only author of this age and stage 
the whole literature of his can be termed in two words authenticity and transparency and this authenticity and transparency gives birth to the intellectual vigor and that intellectual vigor makes us to see the things to assess the things to new our own self how he weaves the plots how he weaves the characters and a great sense of history he has a great sense of history he takes some character from history he takes an event from history and from that history he tries to pre uh present the present situations problem present problems whenever you see orangzeb you will find so many modern orangzebs present and prevalent in the society nowadays authors are of a very limited scope there are story short story writers there are novelist they are assessed he is the only author who can be termed as a complete sahityakar sampurna sahityakar we can call him sampurna sahityakar and at the age of 92 he is still writing i am reminded of a few lines of robert frost and i dedicate to that great man woods are lovely dark and deep but i have promises to keep and miles to go before i sleep and miles to go before i sleep i'm really thankful all of you all the dignitaries on the stage and the writers fraternity in front of me firag gorakhpuri a very prominent and very great urdu author in one couplet he says aane wali naslein tum par रश्क करेंगी हम असरो जब उनको मालूम पड़ेगा तुमने फिराक को देखा था द कमिंग जनरेशन विल फील एनवियस ऑफ अस वेन दे केम टू नो 